old friend Zeke, aka Minjin, is here. But let's get down to business. How does his kit work? How worth it are his advancements and matrices? And why can he one-shot mobs out of existence? I'll be covering all these topics in this video, but if you're looking for rotations and theoretical comparisons, refer to part 2, which I'll post later this week. Let's get started. Zeke's weapon is a hybrid of physical and flame, granting the resonances of each. He can activate both at the same time by equipping one physical and one flame weapon alongside it. However, for the purposes of matrices or other effects, Zeke counts as a physical weapon. Like other V3 plus weapons, he has a weapon passive. Using his skill applies a dot effect that scales with your attack, total resistance, max HP, and crit, lasting for 30 seconds, and increased by 30% when using another non-altered elemental weapon. This is just free damage that will be up 100% of the time, but is unaffected by any modifiers other than skill damage on Titan stats. Typically, this passive will contribute roughly 2% of your total damage. Zeke's trait buffs final damage, and also raises physical attack to the highest value out of all elemental attack values. On top of that, it adds a massive 50% multiplier onto normal attacks when using his weapon. This is additive to the base final damage on his trait. All of Janano's off-field damage is classified as normal attack damage and is buffed by his trait, giving it huge value. As for Zeke's combos, the only relevant combo in his kit is his basic attack chain for DPS, or dodging for additional healing, which comes from another part of his kit which we'll get into. Zeke's skill groups enemies together and buffs your physical and flame damage for 30 seconds while summoning 4 totems. These totems shoot dark souls that do damage to enemies they pass through and grant hyperbody when using Zeke's weapon. Additionally, certain weapon combos will apply snake bites when the skill is active. The skill itself will apply one to the target with the highest health and then the final basic attack chain hit, as well as dodge attack hits, will apply a bite to the lockdown target. The snake bite deals damage and heals you based on your max health, and places a mark on your lockdown target that makes them a serpent chain member. You can have up to 4 serpent chain members marked. Dealing damage to any of them echoes 30% of it to all the members including the base member, meaning that even in a boss fight, you are literally getting a 30% echo on all of your damage. Note that this echo effect only works for damage dealt by the current on-field weapon, meaning passive damage from your off-field weapons, such as Janono tentacles, will not get boosted unless they are on-field. Additionally, Grievous effects applied to Serpent Chain members will be spread to other members in the chain. Subsequent casts of Zeke's skill will also trigger Mighty Wind, which deals damage proportional to the amount of devouring damage hits applied on each mob. When Zeke's skill is on cooldown, it is replaced by a skill that pushes the Dark Orbs back to where they came from. This means that you lose out on passive damage, but allows you to trigger Selfless Realm by doing a back dodge into hold attack, which has a lengthy cooldown of 200 seconds. Within the Selfless Realm, your next three basic or dodge attacks inflicts Dark Slash, which instantly executes any normal or elite mobs that have less than 20,000 times your attack. 
To put that into perspective, if you have 30,000 attack after buffs, any non-boss with 600 mil or less health will get instantly one shot. That's a lot of damage. On bosses or enemies above the threshold, 1500% damage is dealt instead. This covers Zeke's kit. How do his advancements affect his gameplay and strength? Let's take a look in the next section. We'll look at the value of Zeke's advancements with the following Physical, Flame, and Frost teams. Note that Zeke's advancement values are very generic. There is only a little more synergy for Physical than the other elements, which mostly gain the same value. Zeke say one applies a small instance of devouring damage with every grievous application. When paired with A5 Janona, this is applied very frequently due to treasure tracer detonations refreshing grievous. Additionally, this allows for flame weapons fall charge effect to proc grievous. It has some value for physical teams, but is the most worth it for flame for the consistent grievous application. His A3 allows the mighty wind part of his skill to turn targets into serpent chain members, which is nice for utility as you don't have to manually target enemies, but that doesn't add anything outside of base stats in the grand scheme of things. Next, we have his A5, which gives 10% damage reduction doubled to 20% in solo play after using his skill. This obviously doesn't do anything for damage, but it helps a bit for survivability, I guess. Finally, his A6 increases the conduction damage between Serpent Chain members from 30% to 50%. This is a decent damage increase for all teams. Overall, most of Zeke's advancements are just utility. And unlike other characters, where you will be missing key themes such as healing in your comp without certain advancements, the utility from Zeke's advancements is super fringe. So it's recommended to get either A0 or A6, with A1 being a decent stopping point for flame or physical teams, assuming you have A5 Genono for physical. How do his matrices compare to these advancements? Let's take a look. Zeke's two-piece set increases physical and flame attack when using at least one physical or flame weapon, working in the offhand. It also increases the Serpent Chain member limit from 4 to 5. The four-piece effect increases physical and flame attack by a further 9% when applying a snake bite, and also increases final damage, working in the offhand. Overall, this matrix is fairly powerful, being much stronger than Janona or Umi's matrices, even when you don't use it with Zeke. Lyra's 4 piece matrix still holds great value for physical teams due to the on field camping in these teams. But if you don't have that, Samir and Shiro is still competitive with Janono and Umi matrices for the on field slot. Again, note that these matrix values are solely for the on-field spot. Options such as Hobo and Scylla will have their value halved in the offhand slot, so purely off-field matrices are still very important. Zeke's matrix is a considerable gain in damage, working for both flame and physical teams. Due to how little you get from Zeke's advancements, it's recommended to pick up his 4 piece matrix over any advancements, especially if you don't have any good off field sets. This concludes part 1 of my Zeke analysis. 
In part two, I'll be going over team comps, in-depth rotations, and comparisons between other comps. So stay tuned for that. I'll see you guys then.